The silver screen isn't short on protagonists ready to spill blood. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 movie heroes who kill more than the villains. It's I killed done. like six guys, I think. How many guys did you? We, we each shot like several people. A lot of people. Some people get a taste for it, but I don't. Yeah. Man. I shot someone who was already dead, so that doesn't really count as a murder. For this list, you may see a number of anti heroes, but we're drawing the line at main characters who are clearly villains, like Scarface. These protagonists might not shy away from spilling buckets of blood, but they're undeniably the heroes of the story, however flexible their moral codes may be. If you don't see someone you expected here, make sure to check out our original video on the topic. You talking to me? You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Number 10, Judge Dredd. Dread. No, no, I'm not on. I'm not on. I, 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 I can help you. Judge might be his official title, but in the dystopian future metropolis known as Mega City One, jury and executioner are implied, and criminals know it. Juries, executioners, judges. This iconic comic book figure was first brought to life on the big screen by Sylvester Stallone in 1995, but much to the chagrin of fans, Dredd and his history of violent police work were watered down almost beyond recognition. Thankfully, in 2012, Dredd finally got the justice he deserved, with this R-rated, hyper-violent adaptation that even earned the approval of the character's creator, John Wagner. Played by Carl Urban, this Judge Dredd, true to the comics, kills countless criminals, dishing out death sentences without remorse. Control, perps just wiped out an innocent. I'm taking him down. Number nine, Richard B. Riddick, the Chronicles of Riddick franchise. Zeke! Convict, murderer, mercenary, soldier, survivalist, devoted pet owner, and one-time leader of the religious death cult, the Necromongers. Riddick has been many things over the course of his storied life. This ain't nothing new. Throughout it all, however, there have been two relative and somewhat contradictory constants. His penchant for shedding buckets worth of blood, and his tendency to do the right thing. Or at least his version of it. No one's saying Riddick hasn't claimed innocent lives along the way. But this anti-hero has a soft streak, that more often than not sees him putting his fury and predator skill set to unselfish use. In this universe, no villain or adversary can kill as efficiently as Riddick. So yet again, we play for blood. Number 8, Henry, Hardcore Henry. Are you gonna lay there? Swallow that blood in your mouth? Are you gonna stand up, spit it out, and go spill theirs? If you're prone to motion sickness, you might want to look away for this one. This sci fi flick slash experiment in film technique is 96 minutes of fast paced action, shown exclusively from the first person perspective of Henry, who more than earns the title of hardcore as he tears through countless minions. Most online kill counts have his death toll at well over 200, making Henry a literal killing machine. Is everybody dead? Yes. Though the villain, Akan, has likely done more than his fair share of dastardly deeds and intends to claim many innocent lives with his terrorist plots, thanks to Henry, he never gets the chance, making Henry's pile of corpses far more impressive than his adversaries. Henry! Number seven, Frank Castle, The Punisher. Punisher Warzone. Frank Castle has been portrayed on screen by a number of actors, and each iteration has brought something to the table. Admittedly, John Bernthal's Punisher is the clear standout, but since he's thus far been limited to the small screen, we'll be focusing on Ray Stevenson's take on the character. Why? Because for our purposes, Punisher Warzone is the film that delivered the one thing that matters most, over-the-top justice via countless brutal kills. Ah! 
Warzone opens with a clear mission statement in the form of a massacre. This is the character you know from the Punisher Max comics, who will leave no mobster behind. Jigsaw just can't keep up. Die, you bastard! No! James, that's no way to punish the Punisher. Number 6. Harry Tasker, True Lies Hey, you can't have a list titled Movie Heroes Who Kill More Than the Villain without an appearance by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Though Harry Tasker may not deliver carnage in comically massive proportions, like Matrix did in Commando, you have to give credit where credit is due. Matrix was a retired Special Forces colonel operating off the record on foreign soil, meaning he could really go wild. Though part of a covert operation himself, Tasker is attempting to not only save the world, but simultaneously spice things up with his wife in order to save their marriage. <laughs> I'm starting to like this guy. <laughs> oh, we still gotta kill him. I mean, that's a given. To answer your question, Helen Tasker, yes, your husband has killed people. A lot of people. But they were bad. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. Number 5. Eric Brooks, Blade, The Blade Franchise There's still a war going on, and I have a job to do. You want to help? Make me a better Sarah. Before Twilight made vampires brooding and erotic above all else, Wesley Snipes proved that the undead had real box office teeth, and sex appeal was just a part of the package. That's him. It's Blade. It's the day one. As the human-vampire hybrid Blade, Snipes drew a lot of blood, but his character wasn't interested in feeding. He was a vampire hunter that sliced and diced his way through hundreds of vampires across the three films. And sure, many of those blood-sucking fiends had likely killed many an innocent over the course of their unnaturally long lives. But at least within the diegesis of each film, none of them had a large enough appetite to keep up with Blade's thirst for justice. <laughs> Number 4. Logan, Logan On screen, Wolverine has always been the X-Men member most willing to draw blood. But as fans of the comics can attest, that PG-13 rating always meant keeping the beats under control. Sure, we saw him go berserk once or twice, but it was never the carnage his comic book counterpart was known for. For Hugh Jackman's highly anticipated last outing as the character, the Wolverine was finally allowed to show the world why he's the best at what he does. In Logan, the claws really came in all their R-rated glory. Logan was still fighting for what he believed in, but he wasn't held back by the constraints of public heroics. And it was beautiful. Number 3. Mindy McCready, Hit Girl, The Kick-Ass Franchise Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Now, this is a franchise that, in keeping with its mature comic book source material, has never been concerned with good taste. These are heroes with powers living in a realistic world where superheroes and villains alike are basically playing dress up and hacking each other to bits. Who are you? Me? I'm Hit Girl. Though brutality is the name of the game, no one in the series delivers bloodshed and mutilation quite like Hit Girl, the child vigilante whose small stature and young age only serves to increase the shock factor of her violent acts. Hey, I know one of those. <laughs> Though Red Mist and company rack up the kills, none have the skills required to compete with Hit Girl's kill streaks. Number 2. Neo, The Matrix Franchise If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. Do the kills count if they're all taking place within a virtual world? While we'd usually answer no, when it comes to The Matrix, the answer is a resounding yes. Because for each consciousness killed in The Matrix, a body dies in the real world. There's no denying Neo's status as a hero, as he and his fellow Resistance members are fighting for the survival and freedom of the entire human race. <laughs> 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 
While audience members generally accept that justification, it's pretty crazy to think of how many innocent lives Neo has indirectly claimed, especially when you take into consideration all the bodies Agent Smith infected over the course of the trilogy. Back up! Stand back up! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. James Bond – The James Bond Franchise Effective immediately. Your license to kill is revoked. They gave this man a license to kill. And boy, has he ever used it. Do you know how to use one of these? Though he may not kill as many nameless goons per film as some of the other contenders on this list, over the course of his colorful, stylish, and violent history, he's claimed well over 350 lives. It doesn't bother you killing those people. Well, I wouldn't be very good at my job if it did. In most installments, Bond's handful of kills still puts him ahead of the villain, because being the highly effective agent that he is, said villain's deadly plot rarely claim many lives before James puts a stop to it. Who ordered you to kill Sanchez? No one. He's a rogue agent. Of course, there are some films in which Bond kills laps around his foe, like Goldeneye, where he single-handedly ends the lives of 47 men. For England, James? No. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.